Welcome back to the Hot to Best Daily Pick Show for UFC Vegas 32. We got some great fights on this card, so it should be a great one. Let's just get right into some picks. I'm First fight I like on this card, Ian Hinchick taking on um, Mbavi. You know, Hinchick is 14-4 in his career. Mbavi is 9-3. And, um, and for Hinchick, you know, looked comes off a loss against Kevin Gatchlum, um, which wasn't the best fight of his career by any means. But, you know, Mbavi is also coming to loss against Phil Hayes, where he really struggled in that fight. Um, for Ian, he is just a very durable fighter, and he has some absolutely nasty body kicks, can do a lot of damage with those. And he's just a very powerful fighter. You know, every time he throws a punch, there's a potential that a KO is coming sometime soon. Um, and well, and Bobby, you know, is a decent kickboxer. Um, he definitely needs this fight to stay on the feet. That is where he has the advantage. Because for Hinjik, if he gets to the ground, he is the much, much better wrestler here in this one. You know, he's going to want to pressure in this fight. He's going to look to get close. And for Mbavi, he's going to want to try and keep it at range. Um, you know, for Ian, if he can get some pressure, can get some takedowns, I think that he can really dominate this fight from start to finish. You know, he is just a much, much better grappler. Um, and he's going to really outmuscle Mbavi in this fight, in my opinion. You know, he has to really grind this fight out i think is his kind of style to win this fight for ian um and for involving you know he has the five inch height advantage has the three and a half inch reach advantage um and he's going to want to try and stay at range. He has to try and use that to his advantage. He has to take the advantage and use it if he wants to try and win this fight. Um, and that includes keeping the fight on the feet. Because if this thing does go to the ground, you know, if he, he gets pushed up against the fence, if he, you know, is trying to grapple with Inchik, it's going to be it's going to be a quick fight. You know, he's just not... He's not the wrestler. He's not like Hinchik. Hinchik is is the much better wrestler, and he's really gonna you know looking for a KO, looking for submission, looking for whatever way to win. Um, but for Mbappe, you gotta keep it on the feet if he wants to win this fight. So I like Ian Hinchik minus 150 in this fight. For the second fight on the car, Panhili Soriano taking on Brandon Allen. For Soriano, comes into this fight undefeated, 8-0 in his pro career. And he's just an absolute killer of a fighter. You know, watching some of his past fights, um, it's just insane some of the stuff he can do inside the octagon. For Brandon Allen, 16-4 in his pro career, and he's definitely had flashes at times, no doubt. Um, but in his last fight against Sean Strickland, absolutely struggled in that fight. Played right into Sean Strickland's hands. Um, you know, Sean Strickland really didn't have to do a whole lot in that fight at all you know um just not great fight iq at all um and from brendan allen has to get the fight to the ground um is then that's what he failed to do against sean strickland you know he's just not a very good striker his boxing game is is pretty much non-existent and for soriano he is such a powerful striker that if you try and keep this thing on the feet he's gonna knock you out every punch he throws is a potential knockout punch he punches with that much power that much volume um it's just absolutely crazy that there is a little bit of a question mark on the gas tank you know we haven't seen a whole lot of late round action from soriano so um definitely still up in the air but who knows if he even needs it here in this fight um and as far as alan goes on the ground obviously a very very good grappler um, likes to get you up against the cage, likes to try and take you down, and he is very good with the takedowns. You know, he can do a lot with that. Soriano, we don't really know a whole lot about, you know, his takedown defense. There's not a ton of film out there on his takedown defense, um, but if he is preparing for, like, you would assume he's probably preparing um, for the takedowns in this fight, it, it, you know, should very much help him. Um, and it's not like he's horrible at wrestling. You know, he's a state champion wrestler in his past, um, so, you know, has at least some sort of wrestling background there. Um, and he has the major strength advantage in this fight which i can think i think can help him keep it on the feet he can kind of ward off allen's takedown attempts and 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 really stay on the feet in this one and i think this fight has a very major ko potential um and if allen does somehow dominate this fight it has a very big submission potential so really one of these guys is, is going to finish the fight here i i do believe um and i do think it's going to be soriano you know allen um I, I just don't think he gets to the ground as much as he needs to in this fight i think he plays right into soriano's hand less like he did against Sean Strickland um, and I think you know Soriano is, is kind of just the better fighter in this fight um, and we see that on full display from from start to finish so I like Soriano minus 110 in this one
Now head into the main event, the final fight on the card. Corey Sanhagen minus 200 versus TJ Dillashaw. Sanhagen 14 and 2 in his pro career. Dillashaw 16 and 4. Um, and I'll, it seems like seemingly everyone is on Sanhagen going into this fight. And in my opinion, for good reason. You know, got a huge advantage in this fight with you know just looking at physicality alone. Um, Sanhagen a five inch height advantage, a two inch reach advantage, and he's a six year younger fighter. Um, which I guess. You can take that however you want but for dillashaw you know it's not like he's he's had a two and a half year layoff since his last fight um following his suspension so it's not like he is is in his prime at all anymore um and for san hagen absolutely crazy big win for him over frankie egger that flying knee was was absolutely insane um and he is just a very good striker he's a very very good kickboxer um and he can do a lot of damage with his legs his knees is whatever he likes to go at your legs likes to do damage there on his opponents um and he likes to you know keep it at range he likes to use the kicks um and for dillashaw he is a fast fighter he's very quick in the octagon um or at least he was in his prime i feel like he's kind of slowing down a little bit here with age um you know we haven't seen him in two and a half years it's gonna be you know hard to tell what exactly he's gonna look like but um not really to do with this fight but if if age the layoff what we saw with misha tate last week is anything to tell um it, layoffs really don't matter at this point in MMA. It doesn't seem like, especially, you know, with um, the last year and whatever, a lot of guys taking bigger breaks. Um, I don't know that that's going to affect Dillashaw a whole lot here, um, but it definitely be something. Um, really, I think for Dillashaw, I think he's f taking this to the ground is, is where he's going to have the, the bigger advantage here. Um, you know, he likes to wrestle. Um, I just don't see the, the magic with Dillashaw anymore. You know, he seems to be getting up there with age, doesn't seem to quite have that, that extra step that he once did. Um, and for San Hagen, kind of come Coming up um and you know these two teams these two guys are not you know unfamiliar with each other used to be sparring partners used to train together so definitely definitely know each other definitely know you know what to prepare for um but i think the biggest you know probably strength for for san higgin here is the counter punches the counter punches are i think are going to rock dillashaw in this fight um and for san Hagen, you know just really the most powerful guy in the division at least <laughs> if not the top guy very high up there um and i really think he gets the finish in this fight um and really i think it's, it's kind of him looking at a, a title shot in the near future maybe not the next fight that seems a little bit quick obviously um but you know a, a fight or two more if he keeps this, his winning ways up san Hagen is going to be a an in shot for a title Title, um very very soon so i like Corey sanhagen minus 200 in this fight that is it for ufc vegas 32 if you want to see picks for all of the fights on tonight's card head over to hottipest.com and check out the computer model picks up there if you haven't already followed me on uh, Twitter and Instagram, follow me at Hot Debates Chris, as well as on the Best Stamp app. You can get early access to all the picks up there, as well as the Best Tips, uh, Hot Tip Bets main account um, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And if you're watching here on YouTube, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future content. Most importantly, drop a comment down below. Let me know who you guys are betting on for these fights. And yeah, thanks for watching today's video, and I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>